tonight is grace, gratitude, and generosity. The world is changing in pretty significant ways around us, and we have to adjust. We have to grow as people of God. We have to let go of what ever keeps us from following Jesus. Tonight, we're welcoming a new guitarist, Julian Wilson. We're especially grateful because with he and Frank, the average age of the band is now 38. <laughs> it feels really good. Um, yeah. Some of my white hair was disappearing earlier this evening, but I want to start off the service then with White Man's World. One, two, three, four. I'm a white man living in a white. 
white man's world Under our roof is a baby girl I thought this world could be yours one day But her mama knew better I'm a white man living in a white man's town Wanna take a shot of whiskey and burn it down Mama wants to change that Nashville sound But they're never gonna let her There's no such thing as somebody else's war your creature comforts aren't the only thing worth fighting for. Till breathing, it's not too late. We're all carrying one big burden, sharing one day. I'm a white man living in a white man's street. I got the bones of the red man under my feet. I'd never been one of the guys Who pretended not to hear another white man's joke Oh, the times ain't forgotten There's no such thing as somebody else's war Your creature comforts on the own Lord God, creator of all, you created us to be your people, a people free to love and to serve you with all our minds, with all our hearts, and with all our strength. So we come to worship our God, leaving behind all that binds us, our doubts and our fears, our darkness and our hopelessness. Lord Jesus Christ, Savior of all, you came as a child, gathered into the loving embrace of a family. As an adult, you shared love, laughter, and tears with those whom you knew as friends, and the love of the Father with all who would receive it. So we come to you, love and honor you, celebrating the companionship of those you have called to be your disciples. Gracious Spirit, inspirer of all, brooding over us gathered here, eternally breathing life into all of creation, endlessly giving, endlessly comforting. So we come to be still in your presence, to hear in the silence the whisper of God breathing life 
into our souls. Unity in the very life of God. Amen. Please be seated. I don't think we have any announcements. So, I think pa Pastor Harry's hiding out somewhere. Pastor Harry, where are you? something else with them? Like what? Well, look at all the people around him. I don't see them. What do you do? Are you blind or something? Well, maybe I could be blind to other people in need. Right. So why don't you learn to give? You could keep one or even two cans for yourself. And then you could give all these hungry people something to eat. Well, that's a very good idea. I wonder why I didn't think of that myself. Because you're really stupid. <laughs> what did you say? Never mind. When we come to church, part of what we want to learn is to give other people what they need. And we'll be talking more about that in the service. Okay, Pastor Henrietta, you really helped me out tonight. Let's stand for the reading of the gospel. The gospel for this, the 24th service after Pentecost, is written in the book of John, the 15th chapter. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I have learned from my father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. And so that whatever you ask in my name, the father will give you. This is my command, love each other. This is the good news of Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Love each other as I have loved you. That's a pretty amazing proposal. Love one another as I have loved you. So how does God love us? Luther says that if you want to know what God is like, look at Jesus. And if we accept this statement, we no longer have to guess about the nature of God, do we? But the ego likes to play little games as if the ego's opinion means something. But opinions are like noses, everyone has one. So we need to get over ourselves. 
Some of the best minds over the centuries have struggled with understanding the nature of God. Why do we think we have something worthwhile to contribute? I mean, if we don't have much experience with cars, we don't get under the hood and try to fix something. And if we didn't know anything about cooking, we wouldn't risk saying, hey, I'll be glad to fix Thanksgiving dinner. And if we didn't have some expertise as a musician, we wouldn't volunteer to play with this band. It's only when the ego start, stops asking and acting like it knows do we have a chance of experiencing the holy. So how does God love us? I am a Jesus guy. Not that big of a church guy, really, except that it gives us a place to talk about Jesus, at least once a week. And I get paid to read and think and pray and write about Jesus. For me, it couldn't be a better job. And I'm also a psychology guy. Theology, the study of God, and psychology, the study of the soul so that they make excellent partners when we consider a spiritual life. Not real big on the Old Testament, other than the book of Romans and a few of Paul's other letters. I've not been overly concerned with some of the New Testament. Luther himself didn't think much of the books of James or Revelation. So I'm in good company. He, in fact, said, one day I'm going to light my fire with the book of James. So the four Gospels and the person of Jesus Christ are what captivate me. And Luther says, the Bible is the cradle in which we find the Christ child. Jesus is the core, the center, the revelation of God. Love one another as I, the God who became a baby just like you, loves us. Jesus Christ loves those we would typically think are the least lovable. In his day, he hangs out with the bums and hookers and doesn't judge them. Jesus loves the folks on the edge of society, the losers, the misfits, the religious outcasts. He touches the untouchables. He moves to the margin with the marginalized. He casts his lot with the outcasts. He makes his home with the homeless. When we are at our worst, God's best calls us his friends. What makes this critical for the practice of following Christ is that all the people Jesus loved in his face-to-face -face encounters were people who could not hide their broken humanity, which is what most of us spend our time doing. When you are mentally ill, once ascribed to demons, you cannot hide it. When you are ostracized because you're physically ill, you cannot hide it. When you are poor, you cannot hide it. When you're a black sheep, you stand out from the white sheep. When you're a whore, you don't look like a nun. When you don't hang out with the beautiful people, you don't get social media followers. But this is who Jesus loved and loves. What about in our day? It's not much different. When I was in seventh grade, I had my first rock and roll band, the Castaways. You probably heard of them, right? <laughs> no? Okay, well. I think I have autographed pictures somewhere to hand out. We played at a school assembly, and the girls screamed, and we thought we were going to be the next Beatles. We figured we had it going on, and we scheduled our first job, our first paying job, at a CYO dance at a Catholic church. And the day before the dance, the Catholic church canceled, saying they had been warned that there was going to be trouble at the dance. But as we found out the next day, they canceled the dance because they found out our bass player was black. 
Our bass player, Clem Willis, was the son of Bill Willis, one of the first two black professional football players. Bill Willis, who was a pro defensive lineman for the Cleveland Browns, and maybe we can forgive him for playing for the Browns. But Mr. Willis was later head of the Ohio Youth Commission, working on behalf of at-risk youth. I was heartbroken. And since I went to an integrated Lutheran church, I could not understand how a church could be racist. Ah, the innocence of youth. God comes to us as our life. For me, it was grace to cross the racial divide as a teenager. It was grace to sit in the pews with blacks and whites. It was grace to have a friendship and musical partnership with Clem. I saw him, by the way, at our 50th high school reunion. But it was grace that our tenor sax player was Jewish. See, Jesus says, I no longer call you servants, but friends. Grace is having experience in life where your interactions are with people who are not like you. With people who the society wrongly judges. This leads you to have a more expansive view of the human race. I call you friend, says Jesus, and there are no qualifiers. I call you friend, not because you are white and heterosexual, which seems to be the conclusion of too many people today. If you arrived from Mars and went to a church on Sunday morning, you would likely conclude that Christianity is about being white and straight and middle class. Not much has changed since that band job was canceled over 65 years ago, has it? Love one another as I have loved you. If you find it hard to love someone because she is black, because he is gay, because they are Muslim, because she is a trans woman, because he speaks broken English, because her clothes are shabby, because he lives on the wrong side of the tracks, you, my friend, have some spiritual work to do. As I studied the gospel, Jesus seems not to love only one kind of person, the religious alt-right of his day, the Pharisees and Sadducees. The rule keepers, the religious in crowd, the holier than thou inner circle. Jesus calls them whitewashed tombs, lovely on the outside but rotting flesh on the inside. He tells them the whores are streaming into the kingdom of God before them. He calls them hypocrites, looking good on the outside but rotten inside. It's actually pretty simple. If you think you are okay in the sight of God, you're not. If you think you're not okay with God, then you are. That old cliche, hate the sin but love the sinner, is ridiculous. Who has the right to say one sin is worse than the other? You ever notice people who say this never seem to think that their sin is much of a problem? It's always the other guy, right? But we're all broken. We're all messed up in one way or another. We all have parts of us that are not very pretty. But God loves us as we are. And we're asked to love others in their brokenness as God loves them. Now, if you find yourself judging and excluding people because of who they are, it's okay as long as you realize you're failing and vow to work on it. We are all vulnerable flesh and blood. Each of us is still a work in progress. Just be sure you're making progress in your spiritual work. As the mystic Rumi says, your task is not to seek for love, but merely to seek and find all the barriers within yourself that you have built against it. 
If you have experienced being loved by Jesus, if you know you're being loved this minute, then you might find gratitude in your heart. Be grateful for your suffering. There's nothing like suffering to break down the ego's small self, its self-protective, self-centered stance in life. Suffering alone has the power to force us to let go of our small life and find ourselves in God's expansive world. When the ego's door is blown open, then God can come in. Be grateful that each morning we rise to a world that is pure gift. We didn't do anything to deserve this incredible world, even as we suffer COVID-19 together. But even this suffering has the power to help us help those around us. Let's be grateful for these musicians who show up every week and rehearse and offer this worship service. Pat, Jason, Frank, Troy, Al, and tonight Julian. Frank and Julian need to get rid of all us old guys and gals and get a real band going. I mean, they're just incredible musicians. Join me in being grateful for the staff here at CLC who work so hard to make CLC a place where we work to love whoever shows up at our door. Shireen Jordan and Emily Kosova, Council President Beth Rios and Ray Larden sitting there in the back. Maureen Herbster and Pat Bauer, Mandy Fries and Michelle Hilliard, Ed Capsha and Sherry Lane, Jade Lane and Paul Bell up in the balcony, Reba Salak and Patty Ellison also sitting back there. Gratefulness can lead to generosity. When I was in elementary school, my father was principal of a junior high school on the south side of Columbus, Ohio. The south side was the poor side of town, both black and white. And around Christmas, Dad and I would go to the south side to an independent grocery store owned by Fred Erfurt, a kindly German. And Dad would load up grocery carts, and off we would go with the car already loaded with coats, boots, gloves, and now food. Dad seemed to know who among his students had the toughest time of it. At each house, we would leave a coat or some gloves or boots and, of course, food. We didn't ring doorbells. We just left it on the porch and went on to the next house. I'm grateful for that experience because it put in me the value of caring for other people in whatever way we can. And now CLC offers you two opportunities to give it away this holiday season. First, what we're calling a thankful Thanksgiving. We want to give as many families as possible all the food for a great Thanksgiving meal. A turkey, all the side dishes, and a pumpkin pie from Grant Barr. You can't beat that. And second, a joyful Christmas. Again, we want to help families in need have a great Christmas. We've already agreed to fulfill three Christmas wishes for residents of two group homes here in Millvale. And we already have been hearing from families who need help in providing a joyful Christmas for their children. Love one another as I love you. You can generously give by putting a donation in the box in the lobby, by going to our website where you will find a way to donate to either a thankful Christmas, or I mean a joyful Christmas and a thankful thanksgiving or donate to both drop a donation by the church office send your contribution by mail during this pandemic god has revealed to clc how many people we have not been seeing 
who were in real, real need. And so God in Jesus Christ, our friend, asks us to gracefully and gratefully and generously love one another in this very specific way. Amen.
Gracious Father, we're experiencing a, a rise in the number of cases of COVID-19. Deaths are rising, especially for the most vulnerable, the poor, those in nursing homes, those who are already ill. Raise up dedicated leaders who will show us a way through, lead the world back into health, Lord, in your mercy. It's growing darker. We're entering the holiday season and there are hungry people, unemployed people, people who are in pretty bad shape before the virus even spread. We thank you for opening our eyes to the people in need all around us. We didn't know it months and months ago, but we're in the middle of a community in crisis. And with the leadership of your spirit, we're finding a way to give out of our abundance and perhaps even give in sacrificial ways so that people around us might have a, a bit better life. Continue to strengthen all those who serve here and call others to help us in this ministry. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all the Healthcare workers, doctors, nurses, aides, those who clean the rooms, emergency room, medical personnel, first responders, fire and police personnel, especially Chief Tim here in Millvale. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those at the bottom, hourly workers, those who work in our prisons and jails, grocery workers, nursing home employees, waste collectors the homeless, those in jail, immigrants, the poor, the hungry, the elderly, who are so often the lonely and isolated. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those who mourn at the death of Rocky. We pray for those who are ill, most especially Autumn, James, Mike, Callie, Tony, Mar Marion, Carol, Sandy, Fran, James, Daniel, Carrie, Andrea, Marlena, Dana, Ray, Ruthann, Arky, Riley, Larry, Dalton, Jean, Bob, Catherine, Olivia, Roberta, and Cheryl. Be present to them with your spirit and bring healing for them, Lord, in your mercy. We pray for a de-escalation of violence, progress in all having open paths to being who you call them to be. Take it away and break down the barriers that push people down push people out to the edges of the society. Lord, in your mercy. And Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. this time in our country's history, I think we could use a lot of peace, love, and understanding. So this is one of my favorite songs about that.
the holiday season is approaching. And here at CLC, God is calling us to a vital and hopeful ministry during this pandemic. We're being asked to help families in Millvale experience a thankful Thanksgiving and a joyful Christmas. And we need your assistance. We want to provide as many families as possible with all the food for a complete Thanksgiving dinner. Turkey, all the sides, and a pumpkin pie from Grant's Bar, a Millvale treasure. We also want to help families with children have a joyful Christmas. In addition, we have pledged to fulfill three Christmas wishes for the residents of two group homes in Millvale. If we each give what we can, we will be able to care for those in need in Millvale. I think this can be a very special holiday season for many, many families who are struggling to keep their head above water during this pandemic. So stay tuned and we'll give you the information on how you can support these holiday ministries. Thank you and God bless.